Good evening, everybody. Oh, good morning, or good afternoon, or whatever your personal preference is of the day. It doesn't matter if it technically is uh, morning or evening. You can pretend it to be whatever you want. Don't let a clock tell you what the time is. Matthew, Travis, 3X, Andrew, Barry, Ray, no, Ray, Spokeswood, Spookswood, uh, Jim, Jim's here, this is the gym that the keyboard is for, but of course we've got to get to the keyboard, and that means I've got to clear away some of the trash first, Ugh. Oops, that was a little rough. Hey, Defum, Mr. Mech. Figured out the problem with the SD card. Oh, good. What was it? Do share. So that we can all learn. Alright, this is the. Um, uh, yeah, this is the one from the other night where we had to reflow all the. RAM chips because we had the three beep. So it's finally been washed and everything like that. Now I can put it back together and experience the full glory of it not working again. And hey Nick. Now uh, Defum, you don't need sleep. That's that's an illusion. An illusion created by the Matrix software. It's trying to offline your process temporarily while they go work on someone else's process. So if you stay up a little longer, that just means someone else gets to sleep in a little longer. So you do that and give someone else a bit more time to let their process sleep. Connected it with Windows and now what? It's just weird. Don't like it when things do that. That sounds dubious to me. It sounds like that's going to come back in a week and haunt you. It is a good reason why you should check with the Mac disk utility to see if it actually can see the device. Because even if it doesn't understand the file system, if you show all volumes, it will at least show you if the device is there. Ah, uh, Warren, we all got to work. We all got to work hard. Hard and relentlessly. Until we're so rich that we get to make the rules. Space cookies. So a bit of flux that just happened to land there, that's no good. So we'll coax that to come off with a lot of alcohol. Get it drunk and, you know, when you get really drunk and you think you're going to fall off the earth, so you hold on to the grass kind of thing. Well, that's all we're doing here. We just get the flux really drunk. It falls off the plastic and lands up on the, uh, on the bud. No one can see because the overhead's not on. There we go. Yeah, Ray, hopefully it doesn't come back and bite you. It can be a nightmare when they do that. It's better to... It's better to lose the money up front now by not having a job, ha having the job, than it is to invest the time and everything like that. Think you get the job, get paid, and then have to also later on reimburse the person. It's just like a... It's a double insult. Alright, looks like I've... The retainer end piece on that heatsink has snapped off 
Fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure I've got another one around here somewhere. Something familiar looking in here. The only trouble is I just screwed down the other one. Why do I even hold on to that one? That, that's... Can you imagine using that heat sink on anything? Into the rubbish. Well, seems like I've got a lot of them, but not of that type. I probably do on another board. So I can always hijack a board. I think one of Jim's boards, oh not Jim, um, Pedro's boards might have had, yep, yep, yep. Here we go, eeny meeny money mo, pick a Pedro board and, yeah, and steal it. Nope, you're not the right one. You look right to me. So yeah. There you go, Pedro. If you're listening, your board finally came in use. Would I take the challenge of repairing an iPhone 11 Pro? Uh, what's wrong with it? Generally, no, though. But depends what's wrong with it. Or what seems to be wrong with it. Hey, Stephen Burridge. Hey, right, Karen Tippett. Mr. Mac, I thought I said hello to Mr. Mac. Anyway, disappointment of the evening so far, we have to take this back off. Which is annoying because we already put the paste down on it. But I really don't want to send the customer back with that. Hello Ed, welcome. Ah, why the heck do they put tape on here? Maybe it was because they were using to identify the particular board. Yeah, Christian, well, I try to have reasonable tools. I mean, there's always better that I can buy with a lot of situations, but these are the tools that make the money every day. Yeah, there's enough transfer paste there for me to just do that. Um, that would have smeared things back down good enough. Once more, we will have the only thing is I need to get the alignment right of the hole. Uh, hello, Gecko. Ainsley, hello. Hey, Luke Davis as well. well. I haven't even booted this to see if it actually does boot. That's a little bit presumptuous of me, I guess. I mean, for all we know, this thing's going to three-beat me all the way back to a loss.
six kills. Are you kidding me? You, you got oh, you mongrel. For some reason, I was thinking that this had one of the heatsink um, shrouds that just sit on the top, which is the 1465, not this particular model. When I start dealing with the older models, I tend to suffer old timer's disease and start doing silly things. Um, that doesn't have its little rubber block in there, so it'll put in a replacement. Small details, but details I like to, if I can, retain. Okay, we'll just stick that there, and we're going to put the stickers back on as well. If I can even remember where they go, not that it matters. Same 1502 from the last stream, what? Um, I don't, what? No, this isn't a 1502. Maybe I missed the context. Ach, niemand. Why don't you want to just shuffle up a little more, eh? Yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah, when the whole alignment's kind of up, just a little bit out, and you know it's supposed to fit, and you just try to find that annoying little piece of something that's obstructing you from doing the finish properly. And Nelson, just Nelson. <clears throat> wow, there's all manner of weird trash of screws in this container. And I'm, yeah, this is not the most common type of machine for me to repair. Because most of them I just decline before they even get sent to me. It's just like, no, that's going to be living hell. No thanks. And I'm not trying to be explicitly difficult, I'm actually trying to save the customer wasting their own money and me wasting my time. You do have to kind of start to get a little bit ruthless with your job selections. Otherwise you end up with a whole lot of jobs that you can't fix and that the customers w thought that you could fix. Why? Why? Why did you do that? Drop the fan. Well, I haven't bent it at least, so that's good. And then because you've used up all your room uh, room with these jobs that you can't really fix or you're not going to make money from, you just basically choke yourself out of existence. It's probably something we all over time learn or should learn knowing how to ignore the professional begging and pleas to do certain jobs that you know is not going to be good for you. Matthew Fox, what do you give up on? What's Matthew Fox giving up on? Make that a thing. Make what a thing? Hurts reputation, waste time and parts, upsets customers. Yeah, exactly. It's lose lose. There's no real upside at all to it. Is it the Lemonade Express? What? 
I don't know what the Lemonade Express... Oh, I know what you're talking about now. No. No, that was the 1465. That has actually been fixed and done. We did that last night. And that is now in testing. It seems to be doing just fine. But no, it's not the Lemonade Express one. It took me a little bit of thinking to try and work out what you were referring to there. I had one person ring up a few days, ask me to repair a broken USB stick for peanuts. Now, that can go jump. I mean, if you're lucky, you can fix those things pretty quick, but you still got to know what you're doing. you still got to not botch it up. It sounds simple enough, but there's plenty of people who can completely ruin just trying to solder those four wires back together. What in God's name? Okay, it's just flux. It's okay. No need to panic. So we just have to get some anti-flux substance. Let's see, what else? Wi-Fi... you really got to get these jobs done when you can in the quiet times because you know, if you don't, then come Monday morning your customers are going to start querying at 10 minutes before you open or get started and there's going to be dramas and yeah, there's going to be stuff that you have to chase up. It's It never goes as smooth as you want. So at least if you do this sort of stuff now, when it's a bit quieter, you can you know, get on with the, have a chance to survive the Mondays, as it were. Not that Mondays inherently have to be bad, but I know for a lot of people they can be quite distressing. I don't mind Monday myself, mostly because I finally get some packages back. Okay, I might just wait till this boots before I commit to putting the drive in. Okay. Ah, I've got one screw left. My bad. What the? Just before I started this video, I had two MacBook booting USB sticks. And do you think I can find either of them right now? Of course not. It'd be a violation of the fundamental principles of the universe. Okay, those hinges are a little bit weak. Oh, come on. Okay, I found, found them both. Hidden under a magnetic sheet. Ah, Mr. Bianco, welcome. Ah, mongrel. MagSafe 1. Yeah, but that, that just causes um, death from... Putting massive labels on things just causes an escalation in the in the workbench because then you want something else that's going to be more obvious and so you put a bigger, different colour label on and then every time you walk into your workshop it's like flipping My Little Ponies have vomited everywhere and there's just way too much rainbow colour. Aruna. Paul Howe. Uh, 
What's this bank holiday this month? Oh, I hate public holidays. I know, I know that's not popular, but I really do not like public holidays. Still waiting for a washing machine gasket arriving the 20th. That's a couple of days ago. Yeah, seems like we do. Um, all my drives are generally in a little, well, it's a big box now. But these particular ones, these MacBook boot ones, I tend to always have on the workbench around me. Because I use them all the time. Um, Ainsley, you've pretty much labelled most of the places that I would have gone to. Bad Caps, Discord, Rossman Discord, Rossman Repair Forum, and Mac... Yeah, the MacBook Repair Forums on Facebook aren't really that crash hot. Not because the people aren't so much being helpful, but rather because the reply system and all that sort of stuff doesn't really work as well. So it's more the functionality of the thread system that makes it difficult to manage. Uh, well, we didn't uh, we didn't go three beeps, so that's not bad. I'm almost willing to call that a win. Shut that down. I use land yards for important. I used to have land yards for them, and I just recently tossed them out. I found that. Beyond one or two land yards, things just got out of hand. What I really need is to have a proper, like a uh, wall. The key is everything must have its proper place. And once everything has its proper place, then you don't start mixing up everything as much. And if you can't find it here, then you go look at the proper place and you might find it, in theory. Okay, so we'll go for full assembly on this. Complete with closing the panel up. So now this machine has had a RAM reflow and a wash. Hopefully that will make it last for a couple more years. Usually I have, I'd say probably up to a dozen USB sticks, things like Windows installers, Linux installers, Linux testers, MacOS testers, um, drives in different formats like a, say, FAT32 format, NTFS format, just to be able to test stuff. And there's always going to be a stick that you need that you don't have but a lot of this is all going to hopefully get sorted out as I always say once the new workshop is done right now trying to do anything in this workshop is just going to create more clutter than what I already have and I'm sort of at that point where this workshop is in thrash mode kind of like with a PC or a computer, when you start running out of enough memory and you go into swapping and you just don't have enough space and so you just keep paging everything in and out and you don't actually get any real work done and you're officially in thrash mode. So yeah, that's that's what's happening here in this workshop is basically most days I'm um, either starting to get into thrash mode or not far off it. Hey 
Jimbo. Yeah, Sutter, I've um, noticed that it seems like every time I go to do another Windows 10 install, I end up having to go through two or three major updates after the install's finished, and it's like, flippin' heck. So it's like I need to have a Windows machine set aside, dedicated just for the cr purpose of creating a Windows installer USB every single time. Certainly it's quicker. That's a nice solid bone. Runa, can you, Paul, can you tell me about Barlow lenses? Is it increasing the working distance? What is your microscope? Ah, oh, okay, sure. Um, and I understand that question because when I was first trying to pick my microscope, I was not sure what the heck the Barlow was. Give me a second and I'll get something that will be useful. Nah, 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 nah. Right, hopefully I've got this. All right. The first thing to know with microscope heads is that okay, we're actually going to go to the overhead view on this one. Actually, the front face is probably not a bad thing. No, nope, bit small. All right. Anyway, um, okay. So you got the head here. And the body, it's, I think they are 7 to, no, 0.7 to 4.5 times magnification just in the body itself. And then you have the eyepieces, and they will give you an additional, t in this case, these are 10 by, so they'll magnify another 10 by. So that's just eyepieces and body. And that will give you what you typically see as your 7 to 45 multiplication range or zoom range. But the Barlow lens that people talk about, oops, it sits on the underside part of the microscope. So, like, right there. Okay, that, so this is a 0.5 bar, or this is a half zoom Barlow. Barlow. And it just sits on, well, I can't show it here, but it sits on the underside of the microscope and it applies to both of the objectives that are underneath. So when you look on the in underside of the microscope, there are actually two separate lenses that you can see, like a little pair of eyes under there. And this covers over both of them. And what that, the 0.5 in that case, will reduce the overall zoom factor by a half. I personally use 0.7. Now the reason why we do that is because of what you asked about, is the working distance. When you do not have a Barlow in there, by default the working distance is around about 100 millimeters, typical. It depends on, um, yeah, we'll just call it 4 inches, 100 millimeters. If you put a 0.7 on there, which is what I've got, that will raise your um, working distance to about 135 millimeters, 140. So you you get around about 35, 40 percent more working area. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it really does help make it easier to do the work under there. You will often see people also use the 0.5 Barlow, which will um, give you about 200 millimeters working distance and you kind of think, hey, I want to have that. But of course you do reduce your zoom to three and a half to 22 and a half uh, zoom. And when you're sort of stuck at 22 and a half, you often wish you want a little more, particularly with iPhones. So you basically you're trading your zoom range for your um, working distance. The other thing that you trade that doesn't get talk about too much is the optical clarity. Now I'm going to demonstrate that because I think it's important. And this is why Lewis Rossman doesn't like to use a Barlow. And I agree with him in this, but the trouble is we're kind of fighting with working space and I don't seem to have hands that can come in sideways well enough. So we're going to go to the microscope. 
Now get a board. Okay, so this is one that I've been butchering. Okay, so this is a point seven. Let me try and find a part that we can actually. Okay, so that's point seven. So that translates to about thirty-two and a half zoom max, and the clarity is not too bad. So, and I've got. Let me get the ruler that I never use here. And yeah, in this case, one hundred and twenty millimeters working distance to the workpiece. If I zoom all the way out, it's the same anyway. So yeah, about 120, 130. Anyway, we'll go all the way in. And this isn't just about how bright your light is either. So I'm going to change over to a 0.5 Barlow now. <sighs> if any, I could switch these in quickly. It needs a wash anyway. And this is, we're putting on the point 0.5 now. Okay, point 0.5, get the light on. Okay. The trouble with the... Damn it. Yeah. This is the trouble with the point 0.5, is I am all the way up that I can go. I'm going to have to actually lift my microscope slightly more. As soon as I can find the... Ha! Huh, smarty pants. I took out the lock screw on this. Okay, so that's... And you kind of think, oh yeah, you know, that's a good working height to be at. But the trouble is, it really actually cricks your neck more than being in. I'm just going to go maximum zoom on this. Tripping out like a bad 70s. Ah, come on. Okay, so this is about maximum zoom. And as you can see, it's not quite enough for iPhone work. And the other trouble is that the deterioration of the light, uh, even though we've got a fairly reasonable amount of light, if I can crank that right up, the problem is that you're going through a fairly thick optical element and any time you go through anything, you know, the atmosphere, optical elements, whatever, you are going to lose a certain degree of quality. Now if you go completely the opposite way, and go to the Lewis Rossman way, which is no Barlow, so effectively a one by, one by multiplication Barlow, I actually do have one of those. Yeah, this is a one by Barlow, which the very quick minded of you will realize is actually just a piece of glass. But it's useful. Because even if you do decide I'm not going to have any Barlow, I'm going to be just like Lewis Rossman or whatever, you want to still get a little bit of a, you, know, you want to still get that cover glass because all those soldering fumes, flux splutters and things like that, you don't want them on your primary objective lenses because if you mess up your primary objectives, they're a real pain to clean. You don't want to have to clean your primary objectives. Okay. All right, so this is a one by Barlow, or no Barlow, and that's zoomed completely out. And if we go all the way in, you can see it looks a lot. It looks a lot more alive. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. There's more of a 3D feel to it, and it's not just because of the zoom level you're at. It's just the fact that the light has not had to go through as many glass elements and things like that. So it feels livelier. It feels like you're really getting a better look at it. And of course, this comes down to why, with cameras uh, like you know, photo cameras, you can get a camera with maybe only a one megapixel sensor, but if you have a good lens on it, it will beat the pants off a three or four megapixel pixel sensor, 
that only has a little two millimeter lens or something like that. So at the end of the day, your lenses are really the big players in all this. I wish I could work it uh, just the like this, but I don't know. I can't quite crank my arms in under that. And the other thing is that, of course, you don't have the viewing area, which matters a fair bit when it comes to MacBooks. iPhones, not so much. MacBooks, you kind of do want more viewing area. Anyway, so I would say don't ever really... I've never found anyone that really bothers with the 0.5 when they're doing MacBooks, but uh, definitely the 0.7 is worth a shot. And I need to clean this one. It's filthy. Very filthy. And to clean it, I just get some nice IPA. And then scour it out. <laughs> ah. Oops. I have actually forgotten where I put my lens cleaning kit. My bad. We'll have to tip this out and be very gentle with it. So yeah, when you get, when you see the adverts for the microscopes that have like this massive zoom range and you got like, they might have something like two through to 200 multiplication zoom range. It's the same head, the head that does 0.7 to four and a half. And then they're just putting different Barlows on it. Because you can get Barlows all the way from like a 2 by Barlow down to the 0.5. You went back to a 0.5. Wow, I couldn't handle that. I break my neck with a 0.5. We didn't perfectly clean that Barlow, but it's um, better than what it was before. So yeah, when people talk about the Barlow lenses on the microscopes, they're talking about the fat lens that sits at the bottom of the microscope. No one really does anything much with the individual eye pieces, but you can get different variants of that as well. And of course, as always, if you can get yourself something like a Carl Zeiss lens or Olympus lens or a Nikon lensed microscope, then get it because the quality of the optics just they will knock the living daylights out of these amtech microscopes the only reason we put up the amtechs is because it's good enough it's cheap and it's good enough and that's what matters in most cases okay next assembly job before we get to gyms uh, what have i got here what the hell is this oh right that's the 11 incher Where the hell did my 11 inch go? And who are you masquerading as? Okay, you're good. Oh, the 11 inch is sitting right under here. It was right in front of me, I just couldn't see it because it was so small. Oh, thanks, Tim. Um, it Actually, uh, today has been very rough, to be honest. Um, unfortunately, we woke up at, uh, to find that Treacle, which is the mother of the kittens, she unfortunately was, and I'm not joking about this, um, she was killed this morning. Uh, yeah, that, that was really rough. Uh, it's been a rough day. Yeah, it's very difficult to... You know that there's the risk that that's going to happen because they are wild, they're coming and going on their own free will. We don't, we can't contain them in our area. We're very lucky that we do have her kittens. We're very lucky that we got the extra two and a half weeks to with her and the kittens for the sake of the kittens. And, you know, it was nice that she was able to be with us during that time, but... Uh, you know, it's it's cruel because she was getting used to it. You know, she was becoming a social cat. She was enjoying living with us. Um, so she was getting ready to be able to 
for someone to take and she's a beautiful little cat and yeah that was um it's not easy having to go out there and you know you, know, you just got to pick them up and do what you got to do uh, and you got to carry on for the rest of the day and yeah. Not the sort of thing I like to do. Someone's got to do it. That's the trouble when you get into this. Um, when you get into this sort of business of caring for animals, is that you can't control them completely, and you don't have the the wealth and the room to be able to fully contain them, protect them from all this sort of stuff. And so you've got to take your chances and hope for the best. And unfortunately, there are scenarios where this happens. And you know, it's like I so said, I'm just very glad that the kittens are okay. I mean, you know, that's not to how could you say? Um, that's not to say that Treacle was of no value to us or anything like that. I'm just meaning that it would have been substantially worse if that we didn't know where the kittens were. We would have known that she was nursing, and we wouldn't have been out. You know, how do you find them? So thankfully, they're with us. Anyway, so Treacle is now with us in our yard. Uh, um, she joins quite a few others. It never gets easier. It never ever gets easier. In fact, I think it gets harder. But we keep doing what we try to do because we. You know, we want to try and give them a better life. Uh, out here, a lot of people do not care about the livelihood of these animals. And, you know, they consider them a nuisance. And I understand that because, you know, stray cats do go around and they cause trouble. And, you know, they're just being, they're just being animals and they're looking for food and everything like that. So we're doing what we can to s stop them getting in the way of people so that they don't then get harmed by people who do that sort of things to animals but yeah it um it definitely comes with its emotional cost that's for sure this should not come up with anything yeah that's right because it doesn't have a solid state drive all right it's another one i think yeah, to pile these up so that <laughs> yeah, I mean they're not even our cats per se you don't really do a huge amount with them but Okay, so this is the, that's the RAM one, so that's third machine ready to go out for tomorrow. Certainly for some people, they can do it a lot easier, they don't get quite as attached. You know, they, they still care for the animals enough, but they don't get that... Uh, they don't get that highly empathetic um, attachment to them. And those people, it's a tough balance because you can then sort of go too far and people have no empathy at all. They don't care for the animals. They just sort of, and they become resentful towards the animals even though they're supposed to be there to care for them. So finding the right kind of person to do that is tricky. And that's why I always have extreme respect for vets and vet nurses because those people have to deal with the very worst of human behavior towards animals and they are the ones that have to go home every day or they're the ones that have to do all the things that other people won't do for the animals and um, you know things like euthanasia and all that sort of stuff that that's got to cut pretty hard and i can understand why vets have the highest suicide rates around because uh, that is not a nice thing to have to do you 
go into that career, you choose that line of work, typically because you want to save animals and because you love animals, and then you find yourself being the one having to put an end to them. All because of some jerks down the road that you know, don't do the right thing by their animals. You know, they let their dogs roam around or let the cats, you know, don't desex them. So yeah, it's kind of frustrating that the people who have the hearts for these things end up being the ones that having to take the brutality of the reality of it. Uh, it can get you down. It really does you know, get you down. And I think if you have a group of other people who are like-minded, it can help a lot because you know when you're down, they can bring him back up. You know, it's easy to commiserate with them, and you feel like it's uh, genuine. You, know, you don't feel like they're being contrived or anything like that. So we're very happy that we have a good understanding with our vets beyond just the strictly I pay for a service, you deliver the service type thing. So it's um, it's good to have. And of course, I'll be honest and say, you know, this group of people, well, all of you, well, hopefully a great number of you who watch this channel. Now, I know you're here for the MacBooks and the repairs and the Australian slanging match with Lewis Rossman, things like that. But a lot of you are also animal lovers and you understand the way that I feel and you understand the way that Alita feels, you know, my wife, um, about how we feel about animals and how we want to go that extra mile. Even if we don't necessarily have an affinity for that particular type of animal, we just understand that we're trying to do something better for them. And it's quite interesting to find so many of people who are in this industry with us feel the same way. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing. And I think Alita was shocked as well to see how many people were that way inclined as well when she was reading through comments uh, on the live streams. It was a bit of a shock because prior to that sort of thing, she didn't really get to see many people feeling that way, So, which is more the nature of where we are in this town, so to speak, and people in general. So it's very nice that the internet has brought like-minded people together, the right kind of like-minded people, to be fair, it does bring together other people that probably shouldn't be brought together. <sighs> Unless they're squished in a compactor. Then they can be brought together that way. Because we are all nerds and don't get to go out and meet girls. Ha! Huh? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not a nerd. I did get to go out and meet a lot of people. 316 clicks. I was a little bit dorky as a school kid, but I was more focused on my schoolwork. But thankfully I would never really consider myself able to... I wouldn't fit in with proper nerds. They would laugh at me, they'd probably consider me a bit stupid. Jimbo, exactly. Soil and green pellet compression. I like the idea of that. Thank you, Fred Timothy. Yeah, it's it's hard because it's kind of bit of well, there's no sweet really to it, but you know, we were just getting her settled, things were working out well, and then bam, you know, everything just changes within a second. Thanks, Night Owl. Yeah, I could actually probably do with... I don't really drink beer at all, but some days you certainly... you can feel that feeling come in. Yeah, Defom, you're just... you're the only nerd around here. <laughs> okay, so this is Jim's laptop and it needs a keyboard. Barry West, it all boils down to being responsible for the animals you acquire. If one doesn't think it through and understand what comes with them, then they end up putting it on someone else. Yep, that's exactly right. Too many people consider animals as some sort of um, house ornament that is to behave and keep you out of the way. For them. Then when they want to 
do something with it, it's supposed to be there and comply. And so you end up with a lot of people getting animals for the wrong reasons or they don't think it out long term. And the worst thing is that because of that behavior, for the few cases that are legitimate where someone has their pets and animals and something does legitimately come up and there's simply no way out of it and they need someone to take over, take care, someone to become the new parents, even as painful as it will be for them, a lot of those opportunities are already consumed by other people who are being a little bit too flippant with their responsibilities as a you know, pet parent. Yeah, it's it's always it's always been hard on me. Um, I know, right from, crikey, uh, probably six or seven years old, uh, there was always a thing with me, and animals. I always found it very difficult to deal with, um, you know, the loss and stuff like that. didn't like the idea of them not having a proper home or not being cared for properly, all that sort of stuff there. So right from a young age, before people would say that I was indoctrinated by some lunatic greenies or something like that, particularly too that I didn't actually grow up in a family that was specifically like that. Um, my family wasn't anti or um, animal cruel or anything like that, but it wasn't like it was some sort of hippie commune or anything like that. So the fact that I end up the way I am is probably just because I am the way I am. Ainsley, one of your dogs got torsion put. That is, yeah, so that's the sort of crap that I can't, you know, none of us can stand for. We do get that happening in this town as well, where the neighbours have a dispute or something like that. There are some sick FOs. They go around through um, 1040 baits or whatever, or rat poison, yeah, those sort of things. Anyway, I shouldn't go on about it because I know it's probably not exactly what you want to be hearing. But people like that, I'd be happy to turn into fertilizer. Mark Baker, I have a question about the GDPR in Australia. There's now a limit on how long you're allowed to keep the back up oh is there a limit I actually don't know I really don't know Travis my puppy boy died three years ago still grieve every day uh, yeah and you will for many years yet I'm sorry to say and then you get the horrible guilt factor where you sort of think if I don't do this every day if I don't feel grieving every day am I betraying the time I had with them um, am I allowed to forget them yeah. you go through all of that and it just drives yeah. and then of course you can just be going along your day normally and something that pretty much has absolutely what you would think has no relevance to the situation can trigger you and you say you're ruined yeah uh, let's see, keyboard fault on this one. Right here. Luke Davis, yeah, it is just too dangerous these days. Matthew Chalk, our council just south of. Oh, what? Uh, whereabouts are you, Matthew? The multiple 1040. I don't know why they keep using the 10. There are plenty of other options that you know work. I mean, there are a couple of pros of the that bait, but there are too many people, innocent parties that get caught out on that keyboard replacement. Damn it, Jim! Why did you have to break the keyboard? Did you really break this keyboard, Jim, or is it 
your main board. I'm going to have to have a look. Because that looks damn clean. Yeah, the gilts, something that's pretty brutal. The You've seen the amount of fencing that I put around this place. And a few people have kind of like laughed at it, but I don't care about those. They can go to hell. Small town west of Rocky. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, the council between us, I know what you mean. Um, when I lost Jinx, and a few of you may have seen the photo. I think it's my YouTube avatar picture, or one of them. He was also hit on the road, not too f well, basically the same place. So that's why this has been also additionally hard for me today. But once that happened, that was it. You know, it was like the fence was going up, and we. I think I probably spent about ten thousand plus now on the fence, and that doesn't include my labouring time, and that doesn't bother me at all. But it's definitely a case of it's the sort of thing you have to do now. Peaky was broken. Oh, okay. All right then. Yeah, I mean, look, I'll be honest, Jinx was a feral little SOB of a tabby cat. He certainly didn't live up to the sweet, tender tabby sort of um, presumed innocent type thing. He was a downright vicious damn cat most of the time. Uh, you've had roaches in this, I'm afraid, Jim. Yeah. But, you know, I had him for eight years, and that was the other cruel thing, is that by the time, finally after eight years, he kind of, he calmed down. He was no longer angry all the time. And, you know, we were finally, you know, things were really good. Um, and then, yeah, just for some reason, he, and he used to always be on this property, but for some reason, he decided to cross the road on the wrong day. And I never had the compulsion to build a fence with Jinx because of the fact that we would always find him here on the property. He'd usually be up in the roof, in the eaves, something like that. He never crossed over. But he did. Once. Well, okay, probably more than once, to be fair. And that was it. And so, yeah, once that happened, I was like, that's it, I can't go through that again. Not like that. And started building fences and so eight years ten grand a lot of hard work and now most of the property is fenced in what do you think that are the benefits of having dual monitor display ah uh, well it's a bit of a detriment compared to having a th triple head display or a quad head display but certainly over a single head display I like the fact that with the multi display you can put one application at least under systems where you've got multiple desktops you can put one application on a window and keep it pon uh, permanently fixed there while you go through all your other desktops and keep track of other things yeah uh, update info I don't know if I've even got stickers for Jim yet yeah I do actually You have to scratch off a few of these. What? Docks? Oh, shit, bricks. Sorry, Jim, damn it. Far out. Arcade okay, capture. Well, damn it, that's annoying. Sorry, Jim. At least it's only partial. I don't even know why that 
that was up there. It should have just been the fault fault. Sorry. And yeah, this, so far it looks like it's mostly just surface stuff that those veers are getting a bit close, but yeah, this is sort of pretty classic roach damage. It's not bad considering the age of the machine, but it's definitely what's happened. I don't think so far that there is any damage pertaining to the keyboard issue. But yeah, you can see they create a hell of a mess, the little blighters. And their legs. Fortunately, it all really does look like stuff that can get cleaned up in the ultrasonic. You know, I'm not seeing any broken traces or anything like that. It's just a little bit of surface corrosion here and there. So yeah, we'll proceed with the keyboard swap. And, you know, I mean, if Jim's made a furphy and it's not, then I will... Um, I will write a sternly written letter to him. <laughs> I always forget how much more work it is to actually get these ones apart. So much so I'm going to have to drop the air two degrees centigrade. Yeah, stuff's getting serious now. It's had to cool down the room. Okay, we'll take this cable out. So otherwise it's a little too easy to accidentally knock it. Nah, Jim, I did... Uh, oh, what'd you say? Check with uh, another main board. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. It's probably, it. I'd say it legitimately is a fault with the keyboard too. Now I've got to see if I've got a 3115. Didn't we go through this drama the other night? <laughs> Does Paul have a 3115 or is Paul just a nuthead? Ah, oh, man. And the pain of bending over. Okay, we'll do it the other way around. I've got another 3115 chassis and we'll test it in that. Is it worth checking the SMC lines? It um, In this case, I'd say no, only because of the fact that it seems to be on specific keys. And so the SMC stuff would tend to... Let's, let's have a look at how the 3115 does its controller. Because I don't remember. <laughs> I 
Okay, so we go trackpad keyboard into trackpad keyboard PSOC E5701. Right, so basically it's either, it'd have to be a fault with this or with one of the traces coming out of the connector. Because I'm pretty sure, yeah, the, um, it uses the matrix type output. It's on the newer models that you have the USB or the SPI variations. I'm sorry about the sad news earlier, but um, I figured at some point someone was going to be it tonight or another night, someone's going to inquire. So I thought I might as well just get that out for everybody. Yeah, don't know why I'm even bothering to plug those in. We're just testing Jim's board. Sorry about that. I'm sure it was my fault. Okay, that this is a common problem that I encounter with 1278s, and that is this corner here, one of the corners starts to delaminate, and then when you jam it in there, if you don't do it under a microscope, it folds back on itself. And when it folds back on itself, it basically removes itself from the circuit and you lose I'm trying to think, whoops, sorry Jim just ruining Jim's connector here um, and you lose activity on that pin because it's basically insulated on top and bottom then Yeah, sometimes it's effective to just trim off that corner. Hey vlogs watching from the Philippines. Yeah, Kristen, I'll I'll keep to letting it out just here with Elita and our kitty cats. It doesn't help too that you the other cats you know, our own know that something's up and so they all start misbehaving or you know, just acting out and so you have to try and bring yourself back to normality as much as you can in order to prevent them from starting to act all weird uh, Jim I hope this uh, keyboard actually works too <laughs> It would be a bit silly if all of a sudden I'm plugging it into a deck that was wrong. Hey Bruce from PA USA. Okay. We're going to boot into my usual system and of course run the keyboard tester. Wow. Are you beating? What are you doing? Hello. What's going on? Oh wow, that was... That's very slow. Uh, 
Uh, looks like we've got the scammers already. It's only 11 o'clock. I suppose it's daylight savings, so yeah, they're um, they're getting here an hour early. Hey, Blues Pinewood. Ah, booted. It did take a little bit longer than I expected. I just noticed this keyboard, keyboard has a um, bit of a bend in it. This is my own one. It's definitely very slow, but it might be because it doesn't have battery or who knows what else not plugged in. I only plugged in the bare essentials, I didn't do a proper so trackpad's fine. Let's bring up terminal. I mean I know it's running from a USB stick, but it's even slower than I'd expect from that. All we need to do is simply get up our um, keyboard tester, verify up the keyboard tester, and that's it. Did I already click that or what? No, yep, it's coming. Okay. Ew, disgusting. I don't have an A1278 map. Fantastic. Um, A1502 probably is close enough. So here we go. Caplox is right. Escape's right. Yep, you're all safe, Jim. Everything's good. Everything registered on this one, so no troubles at all. <laughs> you can relax a little more. Of course, you still got to go through the torment of watching me do it. Barry, that is correct, yes. It's, we've confirmed it as being the keyboard in the other chassis. So this is Jim's circuit board. And... But, ow! Damn it. Yeah, gym circuit board, but one of my test chassis. I should just swap gym chassis with this one. Da -da -da, done. That wouldn't be very nice of me, though, because. His chassis is the superior quality to this one. This one has been to hell and back. Couldn't find the barcode repo. Um, that's because basically my barcode software doesn't really do anything too fancy in the sense of the only thing it's doing is capturing the uh, particular USB device, that the keyboard device that the barcode presents itself as, and all it does is it just captures the output of that exclusively for itself to prevent whatever the barcode sends as, um, as if it's been typed, prevent it from spewing out wherever I go. That's all my software does. Um, normal you know, most bar barcode scanners are like that. You scan the code and they will produce the decoded version of that as a keyboard sequence.
But then again, maybe that's exactly what you're after in the sense of you're after something that would uh, capture it. That's the only reason I haven't bothered to upload it, because it doesn't actually do anything specifically with the scanner as such. Is it worth retesting this frame? No, I would say... Uh, I mean, I could, but I sort of have a bit of faith in Jim. What do you reckon, Jim? But, see, Jim's already said that a key cap was missing, so... Likely it's that. Oh, I hate getting these out. I wonder if I can do this without... I might just leave that there for the moment. Dun, dun, dun. Just look at my glasses. There is just so much stuff you have to take off these compared to the old newer machines. I was going to say the older, but I mean the newer. Oops. Actually, I shouldn't have to... Yep, I do. The worst thing is, I'm sorry Jim, but I'm probably going to forget a good half of this. Good reason for me to record it. Come on. Yep. Nice long ones down there. And you can never get these cables routed back into that little channeling assembly the same. You can get it close, but uh, getting it factory, no, I've never had much luck getting it that good. Finally, you get access to this little flat. And then this one. Ready to go yet? I'm going to take the screen out on this one as well. So I don't like leaving screen assemblies attached to these things when I'm ripping keyboards out. Yeah, they certainly do use some kind of magic to route the leads. 
Now, Barry, when it comes to keyboard replacements, these... can't say I'm a fan. At least the upside is if you botch it up, you can get a replacement keyboard deck pretty cheap these days. I mean, all you do is you just buy someone's 1278. Oh, they've ruined the screen and everything else on. And um, Anyway, I've got to separate this. Once again, when I'm on chat, I forget to leave two screws in so that I can swing it up into position where it's easier to get the deck away from the hinges. I don't like the idea of just you're relying on the deck itself to leave the hinges up as in without the screws binding them together so it feels like I'm inviting a disaster okay we'll have to leave the speakers in there Might just captain tape these down. I really don't want to have to unroute things more than I want, you know, need to. So try not to cut the finger. Make sure I'm not missing anything else. It's quite surprising, Jim, considering how damn clean this machine is, really. I mean, apart from the roaches doing their little deeds, the machine is genuinely quite clean. I mean, you've seen what I have turn up here. In fact, what many techs have. Amazingly, this one's coming up without me having to use the hot air, so that's nice. Alright, so we can see we've got junk there. Some sort of corrosion's come up around about here. I swear it almost looks like a third party board. All right, let's get unscrewing. <sighs> yeah, Jim, it's kind of surprising. It's... Uh, I'm not quite sure what to think. Anyway, magnet and some unscrewing. I wonder if Alita's listening to me. Alita, are you listening to me? And if you are, can you send me a message? on my phone I'm probably going to get no response <laughs> can you fix the keyboard? well I suppose you could put it through ultrasonic and see how you go Seems to be all the rage lately to wash keyboards. But I suppose the thing against that is the fact that these keyboards, in terms of the actual purchase price for the unit, are not really that expensive. It's all the time, however, involved in removing them and replacing them. That's where the expense of the job is. Now, I know I have seen people who will get it to this state and they will just wash it down, but I'm not willing to do that. Particularly because in most cases the problem will just come straight back or it will turn up 
on different keys. Be like, hello, you thought you got rid of me. Guess what? I'm back. Okay. Unlike the 1466s and similar, <laughs> these have a lot of intermediate screws too. So, which is what, uh, was it Barry, were you saying this last night? That if I ran out of the little black screws, I can just hijack them from 1278s? Personally, I'd rather just simply have a big bag of black screws. Save me having to rip open 1278s like this every time. Pianov, yeah, ultrasonic will mess with them. That's what I was saying. Have you seen that p video yet, Pianov, where the person just takes the backlight layer off and scrubs it down with a wooden brush and soap and water? And it's like, I don't know how long that's going to last. Brave, I'll definitely give them that. I mean, if I was going to do that, I'd certainly rinse it in distilled or at least deionized water. Hey, Adrian Russell. All well, good, thanks. With someone else. Oh, okay. Buy them by the pound. Yeah, exactly. I'd buy them by the pound. The last time I went to go buy a couple of thousand from AliExpress, though, they were only selling them in, whoops, selling them in packets of 100, and then they would have shipping, individual shipping on each packet. So if you say one at a thousand, you say, okay, well, give me ten packets, they would then hit you with ten loads of shipping. And it's like, oh, come on now, that's a load of bollocks. You know damn well that ten packets of this stuff is still lighter than the envelope that you're going to send it in. I guess they're trying to make their money one way or another. Well, I mean, if someone wants to send me a link to a known good supplier who sells them in maybe lots of 10,000 or something, that should about do me for a year. Hmm, seems the leader is not listening to me. She might have fallen asleep by now. But, no, nah, it's 11.30, it's way too early. Okay, I can see liquid damage up here, Jim. And that's like in the, yeah, the QWERTY tab section. Still haven't received the X220. Oof. Wait, you mean the um, Jaguar? Oh wait, that was the XJ220, wasn't it? Stephen Cole, 9.30am. Nice early start for you. Have a delightful Sunday morning. One thing I'm waiting for at the moment is for, of course, st uh, SpaceX's SN8 launch and subsequent coast back down to earth yeah, it's just going to be absolutely brilliant actually I was wrong Jim this is um, the water damage is down at the shift enter area someone was upside down here Kay. I suppose yeah, you have to do a lot more work to get to this keyboard layer but then once you do get here it's not so bad other than trying to get the power button out. 7-4 shift of the air foot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a bit hard for me to show you this, but... I wonder how many people have just yanked out the keyboard forgetting that there is a power button attached to it. Mm. 
There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna find my replacement. Ouch. Oh nice, they've actually got the button already on the middle back plate. That's nice. Rather than making you have to transfer it across yourself. Not that it's a big problem. There's a little bit of buckling on the keyboard there, but it should flatten out. Okay, I'm just going to get to sit in properly underneath the antenna okay Bob's maybe your uncle I'm sure we all have an uncle called Bob somewhere Gemma, I hope this works for your sake. Mm. Gotta admit, I'm more concerned about getting everything else back on as opposed to the keyboard. Ah, I've got the track pad damn flex under there. Alright, we've got our big big hairy magnet covered in squillions of screws if we don't lose any Sorry, I'm just reading chat. I imagine rivets are actually faster in manufacturing because they can probably do it all in a single press moment. Whereas with screwing, they would have to, you know, they've got to individually screw everything, obviously. Whereas with rivets, they can just be popping up out of there and then they just go bang, 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 and you're done. So there'd be the speed aspect more than anything. But I do sincerely agree and would wish that they would go back to screws. I mean, as painful as it is to put a hundred screws back in, it's notably less painful than the rivets. Or better yet, just a sanely engineered and nicely designed keyboard that can just be popped out it would appear that's just too much to ask Yeah, bean counters, for sure. And, I mean, that's often the way it is, isn't it? Start out with a good product, and the bean counters come in, convince you to cut some corners, because no one's going to notice. And uh, you get more profit, which feels like a reward for listening to the bean counters. The bean counters get a little bit more power on the board. And bam, you're on your way down to irrelevance. Uh, 
<laughs> Dang, that's a lot of screws on this though. <laughs> in some ways it feels more than the 1466. I'd imagine it's actually less. Cracky, there's a few. The upside is at least they are threaded properly. So, you know, I'm not having to cut my own thread. Imagine if you had to tap every hole yourself with a proper tap, clear it out, and then come back with the screws afterwards. That would truly suck. Somehow I don't think even Apple would go that way. Come on, screw it, come on. Come on, and you got like a squillion more to go. Why, we're almost there. Hey, Tony Nash. Six hour job, your last one. Crikey, Tony, what, uh, what was your last one? Was it like a 1707 or something? I know the local MacBook authorized repair agent here loathe and detests the keyboard replacements for the Apple program, the butterfly keyboard. Ha, huh, very, yeah, well. Uh, if only they had thought to bring a huge audience to, like, I mean, in the millions, that would have been good. Then it might have actually made it worth it for me, at least. It's been interesting that in the last couple of weeks, the number of views per video have gone up quite a bit, roughly about double. Previously, I'd be like three, four thousand, you know, for a good video. But then this week or so, I've been hitting the nine. The highest I got this week was um, thirteen and a half thousand views, and that was for the scary, hairy, cranky man. Admittingly, a lot of those were robots, duds, or incorrectly routed people reflected by the fact that the average duration of the watch time was 2 minutes and 21 seconds compared to the video which was about 2 hours and 14 minutes. Oh, 12-inch 12, 12 MacBook Air? Wow. Uh, what was the compelling reason for replacing the keyboard rather than getting a replacement deck? A legitimate question. I can imagine COVID times, the time for sourcing a suitable deck would be a notable factor. So like when I had to get those 1708s replaced, that was a nightmare. Thankfully, Mark did help us out, saved my bacon. Thank you, Mark, yet again. I've also had other people save my bacon by sending me much needed modern boards with chicken wings. All because I needed to get that um, 0306 shunt resistor. So thank you very much for that. I do have 0805 2 milli... Uh, Two milliamp, yeah, two milliamp shunt resistor packs coming, and while they're a little oversized compared to 0306, they still would have done the job. What's the subscriber count increase compared to the view increase? I do actually get typically 30 to 50 new subscribers with each video. Like say a 10,000 view video will pick up 30 to 50, but Overall, I have found the subscriber trend is pretty weak, and always has been, and I predominantly attribute that to the fact that I'm not much of a sensationalist type 
YouTuber. Or I could face the reality and say, well, the content is tolerable, but it's not exactly thrilling watching. It's not like I'm blowing up stuff or singing a awesome song or anything like that. Well, don't get me wrong. I can sing an awesome song and I can do an awesomely bad job of singing it. So that would most likely lose me subscribers in the way of Rebecca Black singing Friday did. To be fair, when I look back, although the song wasn't great, I think she was just a bit unlucky with everything. <laughs> she became like the focal point for everybody's dislike. More cat, yeah, yeah, more cat videos. Okay. This is the downside with having nice bright shiny screws on a bright shiny back is that it's quite difficult to then spot which ones you haven't installed. Got one to go. Interesting way of saying that Stephen, yeah. MacBook repair ASMR. Certainly one of the ways that I consider myself differentiated from, say, Lewis Rossman and several others is the fact that I don't actually have a hatred of Apple per se. I consider most of their product well, I consider a good number of their products to actually be quite good. I definitely know that they've had some duds. I mean, they've certainly made some god-awful design decisions occasionally, of which I primarily put down to the bean counters and marketing forcing the hand of the engineers. I like to think that because I know when I've been in that sort of situation and people squawk about the device, I'm kind of like, well, I had the design how it should have been, but marketing changed it. So blame them. Stan, we're doing this one for Jim. Jim in our channel. Right, so that was pretty much the easiest part of it all. Now we have to remember how to reassemble everything because that's going to be difficult. Oh yes, other Jim. Yeah. Jim Hook. Jim Hook, the one that has contributed in the past, the awesome things like ah, the hot glue gun. You gotta love that thing. It took me ages you know, to get one of these. I wanted an 11 mil stick that was battery powered and didn't take forever to heat up and Jim delivered, so that was great. And of course, as everyone knows, Jim also supplied the awesome infrared camera and a schoolie and other things. So yeah, he's been a very, a very helpful person. So it only stands to reason that I should do a keyboard. Tripled in views over the past year, have I? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the Apple ethics situation, you know, I understand that. To be fair, I mean, I consider them also to be the expected pinnacle of capitalism. <laughs> what I don't like about Apple at the moment also is just the way that all the products are... It's no longer the products for the people who just want to get stuff done. It's It's so much more bling now. I mean, they were always blingy type machines, but now it's, there's not even really a forward thinking functionality going on. At least it doesn't feel that way. Yeah, because when they went along and said, that's it, we're dropping all legacy ports, it's all going to be, U we're going to support USB. Um, and when they dropped the three in a three and a quarter floppy, all that sort of stuff, you know, that was, that was some good thinking. But, and the operating system, when they changed over to OS X, that was pretty good. I mean, OS 9 was also not too bad, but it was a little bit rough to handle its times. 
and going to the BSD kernel, you know, Darwin, and switching over to the Intel. Yeah, it was all painful stuff at the time, but it was good. But now it just feels like they're kind of like running out of those good ideas and decide, well, let's see what we can irritate now. That can be the problem when you have a company that is so dominant that you almost don't have anything to fight against. And so you just start eating yourself internally, so to speak. Nick469, you must be talking about... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know Lewis does that, but I do all, I'm fairly sure he, if you really pressed him, I'm fairly sure he wouldn't really be quite as um, anti-Apple, but it serves a good purpose for him. It gets him a lot of viewers, it gets a lot of attention, which means he can then, you know, do a lot more things, you know, um, yeah, when you've got a lot of people behind you, you can... Sorry, I'm just trying to mentally remember the damn routing of these cables, which, of course, we knew was going to be a freaking nightmare. The, um, that whole look down mentality type thing that you're talking about, Luke, a lot of that probably stems from, I know at school, we're talking like back in the 90s, it was sort of like the two teams, you know, you had the PC team and you had the Apple team. And of course, regardless of any r basis of reality, your, your morning break and your lunchtime debate was always argy-barging about which one was better. And so a lot of the time it sort of like just accidentally sort of becomes the standard norm thing that you do when you grow up. I mean, personally, I don't... Windows 10, I will say, actually has turned out alright. I thought Windows 98 SE was also pretty good for the time. Uh, right, that one goes... Uh, if I flip this all around backwards... And I mean, a lot of people don't like, say, Linux. Uh, when Linux first sort of came out back in the early 90s. It took a long time to get any sort of respect for it, particularly the fact that it wasn't even considered a true lin uh, true Unix, which is technically correct. And of course you had the BSD boys beating the hell out of everybody that was Linux. BSD was certainly the more popular flavor for serious professionals. If you use Linux, you were just a you were just a hippie playing around. Okay. Sorry, I'm just. I knew this was going to be fun. I knew my brain was going to most likely fail to remember everything for me here, and it has delivered. <laughs> oh God, brain, why? Windows 8 was never, I was never a fan of. Not because it was a hell of a transition, but because, again, they sort of tried to change things for the sake of change rather than having a legitimate purpose that worked with their users. You know, the whole, let's get rid of the ta uh, start button, let's make everything full screen tiling and all that. That is the one thing that drives me bonkers 
with these OS developers when they and web developing too when they think okay we're going to change everything to basically be like a mobile phone or a tablet and it's like why the hell would you do that you know a lot of people use desktops for the fact that you've got a lot more screen area you've got a fixed keyboard and a mouse you know you the way you operate is different don't mess with the desktop one yeah let the desktop be the desktop and go and make your own window uh, your own phone or tablet specific variant of it but don't try and push the tablet and phone um, systems onto the desktop and try and make desktop people use that it's just not going to work and of course that's what Windows uh, Microsoft found and that's why with Windows 10 they wound back a lot of those things that didn't please the people I know you've got to do some experimenting, but I do wonder at times who their control groups are when they test these things. Hey Jessica, you need a distraction? I'm sorry to hear that. Um, anything you need to talk about? Damn it. Oh, Windows 8 was the number of support calls I would get for that system, it was horrible. Like so they sorted their brains out by the time Windows 10 came around, at least the first version of it. Yep, Paul did not memorize things properly. Fortunately I've got my donor well, my, my, don't know, my test chassis here that I can use as a reference. Hopefully, I do not disassemble that to the point where I can't have to get a third one to find my way back. You prefer the live tiles? Wow. Okay. I mean, hey, you know, no judgment, but are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, just. That's, that was uncalled for, Paul. Hey, Crazy Joe's here. My cat got in a bad fight. He is hurt bad and I'm sick of anxiety. Just got off the phone from the emergency vet. We'll have to wait till the morning. Jessica, I am very sorry to hear about that. I do very much understand that anxiety. I have been through it a few too many times myself. Um, well, we both know well that there's pretty much nothing that anyone can really say that makes it any easier. So I guess all you can do is sit tight and yeah, pass the time. And that's that's often the worst, isn't it? Just trying to find a way to get the hours to tick by for you. Damn, who designed this piece of junk? Okay, you like 8.1. Well, you know, obviously there's some people who do like it. You're proving that. I don't know what to say about that though. You made me put the screw in the wrong hole. Are you happy now? Wait, 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 wait. Come on, surely they all go under the... underneath. I am six skills, you know, my troll radar says that, that you're lying. I don't think anyone can honestly say that with a straight face. It might not have been explicitly as bad as what some people say. I know I've had had a copy on my little IBM machine that I got when I first got back from overseas but it also wasn't brilliant either and then of course Vista oh my goodness 
I don't envy Microsoft for having to try and deal with these migrations, yeah, large steps that they have to take. But at the same time, that is the industry they're in. Yeah, it's all good until you get the zero day, yep. Speaking of which, I know a lot of people like to go on about the CPU flaws and things like that. I actually don't really, I'm not too fussed about it. Because I don't really care that much. I mean, yeah, it's a risk if someone's got, you know, the physical access and all that sort of stuff. But from my perspective, once someone has physical access to your systems, then well, it, the game's over already. And I just turn off that uh, stuff in my systems. So, no, don't protect me from that. Bring it. Especially considering the amount of performance you're losing. Yeah, and I think people are just making an even bigger song and dance about it. Simply to think half of it came from the anti-Intel people. They're like, aha, Intel's going down. You suck, Intel. Yeah, that sort of behavior. And then AMD sort of quietly goes, <coughs> we, we may have contracted that disease as well. Not to the same degree, but we might have it. And everyone's like, no man, it's alright. You don't have it, it's okay. I mean, I personally would prefer to take the performance gain. But I would should say I would prefer not to take the performance hit. Protecting me from something that just simply won't happen. I mean... It's kind of like, the only analogy I can think of is kind of like walking around with a um, lightning arrestor rod taped to your back and then connected to the ground permanently for that time where you might get hit by lightning and it will save your life. I mean, that's probably actually going to save your life more frequently than worrying about the CPU um, spectre issues. I can understand if you're in a high security situation, fine, yeah, that, that's relevant. But for the general user, I mean, crikey, the general user is their own worst nightmare when it comes to security. I mean, they just go through Facebook and they like, go, ooh, this looks like a picture where someone's showing a little bit more skin than normal. I'm going to click on this because I want to have a little bit more look at that skin. And then next thing you know, they're... Um, they're hacked. I love it. Every time I see on the local groups, I've been hacked, don't respond to any friend requests. I'm like, you haven't been hacked. So you clicked on one of those picture things. You got, you didn't get hacked, you got owned. And that's pretty much it. But of course you can't tell them that. No, 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 I was hacked. I never did anything like that. So, yeah, whatever. Owned, not hacked. Someone should mem that. And you've got to use the PWN EDU version. All because they were trying to get a little bit more... A bit more skin lookies. So, you don't do that on Facebook. And I bet you that when they see someone posting something like that, the first thing they think of is like, ha, huh, that person clicked on it. And you're like, yep, 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 yep. And that's because you know that uh, that's how you got infected in the first place. Oh, damn it, I've scrambled my cabling here. Needs to say, when the people turn off like that, I'm happy to take their money and reformat their machines. Hey, Wizok. Yeah, doing alright. 
Tony Nash. I work in cybersecurity as my day job. I deal with people and companies facing phishing, ransomware attacks. The old saying that Macs don't get viruses. Yeah, not in this day and age. Uh, certainly, as we move more to online platforms, you know, OS agnostic type stuff, basically we are becoming the dream that Sun did have, which is the network is the computer. It just wasn't for as cool as they wanted that to sound, they never quite got it right. But they are right in the sense that the network is the computer. So yeah, we're going to have more and more of these security issues that aren't specifically OS dependent or exclusive to OS, a particular OS. Who on here sent you those challenge boards for repair a month ago? I haven't seen them on much. Hope all is well. Um, let's see. There was the ones that Pedro sent me, but then there were the ones that I commandeered from a place that I can't really tell you where I got them from. AJ, one of our customers loved doing that four times this year. Oh my goodness. Four times? They've got a problem. Uh, that's a serious problem. That's when you just take away... How do they get the... Um, well, that's the other problem. You know, they don't even have to have admin password or access to their computer because it's not the computer half the time that's getting destroyed or messed up. It's Although in this case, what you've said, they have. But their social media accounts and things like that. Um, it looks like we actually reassembled that color me shocked. We managed to reassemble that. I was not expecting that. I was honestly anticipating at 2 o'clock in the morning with me huddled up in the corner trying to come up with excuses to explain to Jim why I couldn't do it. Yeah, something like a dog ate my breakfast or something. I don't know. Wallabies punched me in the face and I forgot how to do my job. How's that? Okay, I do have these two long screws. I'm not 100% sure where they're from. I've got a couple of screws where I'm... <laughs> Damn it. They're freebies. Okay, so I've got a flat-headed one up here. And that's pretty much it. Broad flat at the top, which is this one here. So that's that. Yeah, but where did these jokers come from? <sighs> the IT company has revoked all their admin accounts. Everyone has only has local access, yeah. Now, where did those long screws go? What did I muck up? What did I forget? Yeah, these ones up here, they're a pair of Phillips head. What are they? 20 mil long, two and a half mil, two and a half thread. Hinges? No, the hinges have got the six T8 screws in them, so that's set. Oh, I know where they're from. I know where they're from. They're from here. The hard drive assembly. Crikey, I was having a moment then. I'm having a real moment. Worried Jim was going to go full Karen on me. Can't believe I sent you my computer. I trusted you, Paul. All this time you said you're a professional, but it turns out you're nothing but just a hack, like all the others. Just a hack. 
It's like, damn, he caught me out in the truth. <laughs> and it is the truth anyway. I am a hack. Uh, anyone tells you they're not a hack when it comes to this stuff? They're deluded. All of this stuff, we're just doing the very best we can with the information we have, the tools we have, and the luck. And we essentially try not to do too much damage in the pursuit of trying to you know, fix everything. It's not like there is an official repair program or anything like that at this point. I don't think even Apple has one. The gecko's enjoying my work, yeah. They gotta be careful, those things can end up being a little snack for the felines. I don't like the cats eating them to be honest. And I do try to get the geckos off the cats if the cats get them, which is actually pretty dangerous for me. Cats get pretty possessive about them for some reason. Now the main reason I don't like it is because most geckos, in fact most insects around here, do have or carry a rather nasty tapeworm parasite. And it's ex exceptionally difficult to get it out of the cat's system. Okay, just going to loop that around. Ach, Nima, come on. <laughs> Pull up all these cables, make sure we trap the trackpad one because, you know, everybody forgets about the trackpad one. And then we've, while we're focused on that, the power MagSafe one pops out. It's like trying to be Indiana Jones, except you need half a dozen hands. Okay, that's that. Uh, Jim, okay, all right, so you got the two two gigabytes yeah if you want to go up to eight gigs then definitely you'll want to go to the single stick due to the inherent flaw that these have with their ram slots and you can just get that eight gig stick off you know most places so see how it goes with the new keyboard make sure it stays alive for at least a couple of weeks then just pop those rams out and put your single 8 gig stick in T6 Tony Nash, you're a specialist, someone self-taught that isn't smart enough to reverse engineer technology that was be built by many well yeah, the jury's out on that. I gotta admit though, for once in my life the bank balance is kind of agreeing with you. Or at least it seems to be. Um, that's the reason why you go for the single channel is because with these boards, all of this generation of boards, the one slot fails after time. So rather than, oh, unbelievable, I pulled that trackpad cable back and what happens, it still manages to sneak its dirty little tab under there. Gotcha. Yeah, so you're going to end up with a failure there anyway, so you can't, you may as well just prepare for it. Some geckos can be toxic, not all. 
you little mongrel. Screw overboard. Man the magnet. Ugh. We've lost a screw on the floor, so it's strip magnet time to find it. Oh, sorry, spider. Little white tip spider there. No, not the one that people think kills them and stuff like that. Do you want to come up and be on the live stream? No? Okay. Right. It's decided it doesn't want to partake in the excessive prejudice against spiders on the channel. <sighs> well, I'm picking up a squillion screws, but none of them are the one that Jim wants. <sighs> Does it mean I'm going to have to steal a screw from my own setup? Yep, that uh, that that one's lost to see. Yeah, we're never going to see that one again. Sorry, buddy. <sighs> we'll just take it out of one of my own. Gecko at it again. Okay, A1278. <laughs> bring a wolf spider. Well, yeah, I can bring you a wolf spider. I do get quite a lot of them around here. The only trouble with the wolf spiders is that they are a little bit difficult to... Um, what's the word I'm after? They jump around a lot. They run around a lot. They're very fast-moving spiders, so they don't really like to be contained. So you kind of have to box them up, and then you can you know, show them on. But they, they are they're rather spectacular New Age spider. I tend to prefer the new edge spiders compared to say the old old style ones like tarantulas and stuff like that. Are these gym screws? Yep, they're gym screws. Sorry, not old age and new age, I mean old world or new world. My apologies. I think all the spider experts out there are just groaning in horror. I mean, we do get, uh, the more common spider, of course, we get around here are the Huntsman. But while the Huntsman, I wouldn't say, is as quick in terms of speed per scale or for its size, they do, however, scare the living daylights out of me more often than not. It's just the way they run. They run differently to normal spiders. And so... Yeah, when they get up and move, you find yourself moving pretty damn quick as well. They're not going to harm you per se. Yeah, they're not going to. They're not venomous to humans. Obviously, if you get bitten, that you know the bite can get infected. Has to be expected. Ooh, that rhymed. But aside from that, you know, it's not like you're going to die of the venom of a wolf or a huntsman. Redback can mess you up pretty bad. Not often that you die from them either, at least unless you've got some other pre-existing condition. Sydney Funnel Web, on the other hand, yeah, that will knock you down. Is that a 750? I don't know, actually. Jim, what drive is that one? I didn't look. I apologise. Yeah, 
in Australia, it's more the snakes that you have to be concerned about. But in fairness, the snakes, if you just don't move, then they'll leave you alone. They really don't want to get involved with human business at all. Just don't move, they'll leave you alone. If you think they're attacking you, it's probably because you're in their exit path. Yeah, they will have an idea of where they want to go to get the hell out of your way. And if it's behind you, that's when it seems like they're trying to chase and attack you. And yes, they will put up a very good defensive, offensive looking stance. You know, they're like... <laughs> Obviously I'm not a snake person. But it is, for the most part, just that. It's just a show. So get out of the way. And the snake will leave you alone. We're not food. It's that simple. I know there's certainly going to be a lot of anecdotal reports where people say, no, it was definitely following, it was chasing me, it was following me or whatever. But um, it's a combination of the fact that a lot of people do get in the path of where the snake wants to go. And secondly, when you're in that scenario and you're not familiar with the snake, and their behaviours, then of course you're going to assume the worst. And I don't blame you, and you should. But uh, most of the time when people get bitten these days, it's because they were trying to kill the snake. I'd say about 90% of people presenting at ER for a snake bite here in Australia were trying to kill the snake. It's like, don't try and kill it. The other... 10%, or I should say 5%, a lot of them picked up the snake. Half the time because they're trying to show off. And uh, the other half time because they just weren't thinking. But yeah, don't pick up snakes that you don't know what they are. Even I won't pick up snakes. Okay, that's not true. I do pick up some, but they're usually blind snakes or um, snakes that I have to pick up. Pythons sometimes. Pythons can be deceptive bastards though because they are heavy. So you look at a python say 1.8 meters long or something like that and you think yeah it's just you know it doesn't look too heavy. You try to get that thing on the end of your um, stick that you're trying to get it out of the yard with or whatever. It's the leverage effect combined with its fatness makes it very difficult. You need to have strong arms. I do not have that. <laughs> oh, and L, how's it going? Yeah, they they won't. That's right. They'll defend themselves. I mean, any reasonable animal wouldn't would, as you'd expect. But uh, yeah, they're generally not in the habit of actually attacking people, for the sake of attacking people. But I do find it amusing seeing these people handling whopping great big pythons, you know, anaconda type style things. I'm like, wow, you must be seriously buff because I, I don't know how you can hold those things up. They're fat and heavy. Okay, Jim, let's go. Looking good. Nice screen there, Jim, by the way. Nice and clear. Okay, there's a little smidge there. It's just a piece of dust. At least we know it must be partially working because we managed to select our boot option. Ah, uh, it is an 860 Evo. Yeah. I think more people in Australia get killed by cassowaries. Mm. Cassowaries is like a dinosaur chicken with raptor claw. And what they do is they kick you with their raptor claw and disembowel you. And I'm actually not joking, that is what they do. Or they'll get you on the back and they'll make mince pies out of your kidneys.
We're going into the keyboard tester. And we're going to use a 1502 keyboard. Yeah, it's a little bit broad. No, oh, well, it'll work. Okay, one thing I found with some of these new keyboards is that you can't do the sweep method because they've made the key caps stand up a little more. So I have to go along and do the press test. That is a nice thing about the butterfly keyboards is you can just do that beautiful sweep to test. Okay, P. That scared me for a second, Jim. Of all the keys that I didn't press properly, P was one of them, and P was one of the letters that you had trouble with. That had me concerned there for a second. Battery's running. Temperatures are looking good. Yeah, base time is sharing all the stuff we don't want to see. Thank you. AJ, precisely, yeah. Coincidences are terrible things at times. Microphone's working. Thank goodness for that. I think, Jim, you'll find that the keyboard feel... It isn't quite as good as an original Apple, like Apple definitely does have a nice feel on the originals of these. So this is an aftermarket obviously, but I think it's it still feels good. It just the caps are sitting a little higher than I would like personally. What else do I get to test here? It's just unfortunate you can't get genuine, genuine units unless you strip it from another machine. It's not, you know, if you're a professional typist, you'll notice the difference. But if you're just a, you know, finger pointy hacky type typer, you're not going to notice. Doing good on this, 15 to 20 frames per second on Valley. That's pretty good going. Yeah, well, nothing's as good as an IBM M, except another IBM M. What have we got? We've got an i5, 4 gig, yeah, 2.5 gigahertz. Okay, that's good. So we're all up and running good, Jim. I don't think there's anything else I need to test, is there? Yep. I guess we'll send that out. Alright, Barry, thank you for being here. Well, we're cl closing up now anyway. We've done the job. Jim's excited and happy. Yeah, James, I do find High Sierra as my preferred go to system at the moment, which is why I've got it on these test discs, uh, USB sticks. It just seems to be that nice balance between providing features but still being modern enough without constricting everything like Catalina does. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see, AJ, have you looked into the ARP program? I haven't seen anyone mention what Mac parts are on Office. Oh, the Apple... No. Likewise with the, the phone... Um, authorized phone repair agent type thing I think for the most part it really was just a case of them collecting everybody's details to know who to kick if they cause any troubles so I was very glad not to participate in that I let everyone else be the um, the cannon fodder for <laughs> that particular round of the war I'm dis I would rather get a good relationship with my local AASP 
and work something through them rather than putting myself directly into the crosshairs of Apple. I find that a lot of the AASPs, they will tend to be more inclined to be techs like yourself and they'll want to help you on the you know, bit of cloak and dagger stuff behind the curtain where Apple can't see. But I think if you sign up to Apple directly, then you're pretty much going to find yourself reamed out at some point. At least, yeah, you know, that's my cynical, paranoid view. Hey, Basil, thank you. Yeah, I saw a YouTube deal was off. I'm actually amazed that it stayed up there as long as that did. I think they kind of... They, they kind of messed it up for themselves because... As examples, they put in the downloads to some copyright material rather than public domain videos. And so the guy goes out of his way to avoid um, illegal stuff or stuff that will put him in a bit of a bind, but then goes and puts in the rec uh, test examples videos that are copyright. So I'd say that gave the lawyers the window to do what they did. Chances are, though, that someone will just pop it up somewhere else under a different name without that uh, conflicting bit of information. I don't think it's really possible to truly lock down a lot of these things. I mean, they tried pretty hard with DCSS, and they didn't win in the end with that. I mean, hell, people put it on t-shirts. That was pretty interesting. All right, that's it. We are done. Thank you, everyone, for being here, and I might see you tomorrow. It is Monday, of course, for me tomorrow, so I may get packages, may not. Depends if the couriers are working in my favor or not. But until the next time, you all take care. I'll see you later.